The Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Rob McConnell's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Exxon Radio Show or endorsed in any manner by Rob McConnell, Relmar McConnell Media Company, the Exxon Broadcast Network, its affiliated networks, stations, employees, or advertisers. All Hit Radio. Welcome to the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. And welcome back, everyone. This is the Exxon. I am Rob McConnell, coming to you from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. If you would like to visit us online, it's very simple. To find out all about the great programming we have available for you 24-7, 365 on the Exxon Broadcast Network, just visit www.xzbn.net. And we're coming to you around the world tonight on the Exxon Broadcast Network, Talkstar Radio Network, Mutual Broadcast Network, and iHeartRadio. My guest this hour, Exxon Nation, is no stranger to the Exxon. Chrissy Blaze is her name, and Chrissy is the author of 12 books, including her latest book, Earth, Astrology's Missing Planet, Reconnecting with Its Sacred Power. Chrissy is an international speaker and has been a professional astrologer for over 30 years. She was classically trained at the Faculty of Astrological Studies, London. She is a regular media guest, healer, and teacher of topics from astrology to yoga and UFOs. Christy is also an ordained priest in the Aetherius Society and was a direct disciple of the Society's founder, the late yoga master, Dr. George King, for over 20 years in London and Los Angeles. She now lives in Michigan with her, her author, teacher, husband, where they continue to support and promote the Aetherius Society there in Royal Oaks. Her websites are www.chrissyblaze.com, www.astrologycity.com, and www.aetherius.org. And Chrissy Blaze, welcome back to the Exxon. Always so super talking to you, Chrissy. Hi there, Rob. It's very nice of you to have me back. Hey. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty darn good. Chrissy, tell me about your latest book, Earth, Astrology's Missing Planet, Reconnecting with Its Sacred Power. Yeah, this is uh, the 12th and I think the, the best one ever. And uh, it's something that's been germinating in my mind for years, actually. Mm-hmm. And I'm sort of waiting for another astrologer to write it. Uh, because if you think about it, well, if you know anything about astrology, and most people know a little, um, we take into account the influence of all the planets in our solar system, and even more than that, actually, yeah. now. But we don't take into account the very planet that we touch every day of our life, which is interesting because it's, astrology is all about influence, the influence of the planets. Mm-hmm. And so we must admit that something so close to us obviously affects us, Right. And when I bring this up over the years to students uh, in classes about astrology, they always say, well, that's obvious, you know. But you know what, Rob, there just isn't really a book about it, as far as I know. Certainly haven't seen one. And so I thought I'd take the plunge and uh, write it based on really nothing except my years of experience and my intuition and, you know, the feelings I've had about this influence Mm -hmm. and also about, um, you know, things I've studied over the years and so forth. So this is it. It was published in February, a couple of months ago, and I'm promoting it in different parts of the world. So, Excellent. Chrissy, so what influence does planet Earth play in our astrological charts? Yeah, it plays a lot of influence, actually. Um, as, as far as astrology, um, people probably know that all the planets in astrology have a different influence. Right. The most important is the sun, and I think most people know what their sun sign is, right? Yep. Um, and they have, most people know a little bit about that influence. Although, you know, I've found people, a lot of people say, well, I'm nothing like my sun sign. And I usually say, well, you should be. Because we're kind of here 
Uh, the planets are helping us to grow, and we don't need astrology, but it's a useful tool to understand ourselves and how we operate in different situations. Um, Venus will show us how we operate in a social setting, and uh, Mars will show us um, how our assertive nature and, and different, different things. Now, the Earth is exactly opposite the sun and always is in everybody's chart. So if you know your uh, sun sign, um, you'll know your earth sign because it's exactly opposite. For example, I'm an Aries and my earth sign is the opposite sign of Libra. And um, the influence is, well, let me go to the sun. The sun is our creativity. It's, our, it's, it's the desire to express our creativity. But the sun, very, the earth very simply uh, stated is it offers a concrete way to develop our creativity and our character and to use the vitality of the sun on this physical plane in other words you might have these tremendous um, dreams of doing this and ambitions of being this and this is the sun speaking oh yes you wish you could do this and this and this but somehow you never seem to achieve it but I find that when people start to um, be more conscious of the power of the earth sign, it helps them to uh, bring those uh, dreams into manifestation, basically. Um, that's a very brief overview. You know, there's a, a lot more to it than that. But basically, it's, it's helping us to um, work out our uh, creative urges, our character um, on this physical plane, not surprisingly. And there are a lot more to it as well. So, Chrissy, does the... The addition of the Earth into the astrological chart, does it change the astrological chart? No, it doesn't change the chart. It, it just, um, wherever you, you drop the chart and you mm -hmm. have um, 12 segments, the houses, yeah. and uh, the planets are spread around the, the houses depending on the time you were born, where you were born, uh, the date you were born. Um, for example, somebody born right now would have, you know, you could drop the chart. And, and I know, for example, there's... Uh, where the sun is, the moon, and all the planets. So, but the Earth is just exactly opposite the sun. So you'll just put it in into that place, exactly opposite the sun, and you'll find that um, it will fall into a certain area of your life. So every house, I don't know if you're aware. I don't know how much you know about astrology, Rob. Quite a lot, I would think. Yeah, right? yeah. I, I'm, I've well, I've had the pleasure of talking to astrologers like yourself and and others over the years, so I, I think I've gained a little bit of knowledge. I know my son uh, my son sign is Taurus. That's right. Yes. Yeah. Oh wow. Yes. Yeah. Is it the beginning of Taurus? Uh, Can I ask? Well, it was last week on the twenty seventh. Oh, okay, that's okay. Because yeah. uh, there's a huge thing happening in Tor with the Taurians over the next seven years, by the way, which is potentially very, very good, but um, we can talk about that if you're interested. Yeah. Also, there's a new moon in Taurus on, on the 15th next week, so good to make the most of that. But Taurus is a very interesting sign because the Earth is the, one of the rulers, a co-ruler of the sign of Taurus. So there's a strong connection between um, the Earth and Taurians. And um, this is something, again, which I am posing mm -hmm. as, as a... You know, I have read it. I have studied it. It's something I really believe. And the other ruler is Venus, as you probably know. Sure. So Venus and the Earth, I believe, are the two rulers of that sign. Interesting. And so it's, it's just, um, it will fall in a certain area of the chart, a certain house. So it will, um, depending on where it falls, whether it's in the house of relationships or career mm -hmm. or, or the inner self, it depends on, again, another overlay of the influence of this, of this planet. But it it's sort of a, has a grounding influence, as you might imagine. And uh, there's a strong connection, too, between the planet Saturn and the Earth, because Saturn, as you probably know, represents our karma, if you like, what we're here to go through, what we're here to experience, right. a result of all our actions and thoughts in the past. But the Earth, if you like, represents our dharma, the way we go about doing this, the way we go about moving through our karma uh, and so on. So, yeah, it, I think that's a long answer to a short question. <laughs> it doesn't change the chart. It just adds another planet. Um, with the possibility of a ninth planet out there, does this ninth planet, Nibiru, Planet X, does it play a part in our astrological chart? Yeah, I, I'm, I mean, it does, yes. But nobody, as far as I know, has really uh, 
talk to discuss the influence of it. Right. Um, it usually takes quite a long time for astrologers to come together and uh, come up with you know the influence of the planet. Um, so this is not something that's sort of in mainstream astrology yet. It's another series of books, I think. <laughs> Interesting thought. Um, but certainly now people are getting the hang of uh, the newer planets. Um, you know, like um, Chiron, now there's, uh, when it first came out, everyone said, oh, it's the wounded healer. And mm-hmm. that, that sort of changed and uh, there's a lot more definition to it. But that's, as far as I know, there's not really um, um, agreement on, on the planet X. All right, Chrissy, stand by, dear. You and I have to take our first break. And Exxon Nation, Chrissy Blaze is my very special guest this hour, a welcome friend of the Exxon. If you'd like to contact Chrissy or visit her websites, here they are. There's three of them, www.astrologycity.com, www.chrissyblaze.com. That's C-H-R-I-S-S-I-E-B-L-A-Z-E.com. And www.etherius.org. And Chrissy and I will be back on the other side of this commercial break as we continue here in the X Zone with yours truly, Rob McConnell, from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't forget, you can find out all about the great programming we have available for you 24 7, 365 on the X Zone Broadcast Network at www.xzbn.net. And don't forget to check us out on Simul TV www.simultv.com Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere. 24-7-365. You have heard of the X-Zone? Now watch it on Simo TV plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand, worldwide, and more. Does this sound like tomorrow's television? Well, it is, but you can have it today, right now. It is Simul TV. Simul TV offers what the others only wish they could provide. 15 exclusive channels like X-Zone, Sci-Fi, and Horror. We are worldwide. No other provider offers that. 500 built-in video games. No need to have an extra expensive system. We have them included. Free video on demand. Live streaming events from around the world. Interactive online network and much more. Tomorrow's TV today. Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at simultv.com. Do it today. Modern Esoteric, Beyond Our Senses by Brad Olson, consummates the lifeology story about where humanity originates. It is the lost continents, the primitive wisdom, the mythos of creation, and the rethinking of ancient history as we are taught in academia. There is much more to the story than what we have been told. As this is the first book in the Esoteric series, Modern Esoteric starts at the beginning of time and accelerates up to this modern age. Future Esoteric is book two in the series and takes a forward-looking position ahead of today with an open and honest examination of the ET issue and various unexplained phenomena. To discover the writings of author Brad Olson, visit www.bradolson.com. That's www.bradolson.com. 
www.thepowerhouse.com. Chrissy Blaze is my special guest this hour, Exxon Nation. We're talking about Chrissy's new book. It's entitled Earth, Astrology's Missing Planet, Reconnecting with Its Sacred Power. Uh, Chrissy, let me ask you a hypothetical question. Let us say that somebody is born on planet Earth, and during their lifetime, they are able to move to Mars. How does that affect the person's astrological chart? Well, that's an interesting question. Yeah, I'm... Well, it, I'm sure it would, because um, we, we drop the chart from the perspective of where we are now, so it would be different, but still all the, the influence of all the planets would still be there, um, emanating and forming this great cosmic symphony, I right. believe, to help us to grow and evolve throughout the solar system. So I think whatever planet we're on, we're still in this kind of, you know, way, uh, sort of wave of energies mm-hmm. coming from the planets. Why do you think it's important that we add the Earth sign into the into the mix if it won't change anything? Is it because it gives us that extra bit of vision into ourselves? Yeah, definitely, because most people don't use their potential fully. You know, mm-hmm. we're here uh, through the lifetimes learning to grow and use more and more of that potential. And, um, you know, a lot of people, they... You know, they don't really push the envelope, if you like, and they're using very little of the potential, which the potential, if you like, is um, part of it, of course, is the, the God within, which is the divine potential. But right. also we have the potential of all that we've learned through the lifetimes, and this is expressed in our birth chart, which is like our karmic pattern, if you like. And it takes courage to, to start to use this potential fully, you know, more, more, more fully. Um, for example, if you have a very difficult pattern in your birth chart, an aspect between, say, Saturn and Mars, uh, you might steer away from using it and retreat. Or a, if a more courageous person would go out there and, and push the envelope and use that potential and sort of have some breakthroughs. So I suppose my, my answer is that the more potential that we can use from all the planets, and especially the Earth on which we live, the more we grow, the more we uh, emanate the, you know, these energies, the more we can sort of achieve in life, the more we can understand, the more wisdom, the more intuition, and so forth. So all the planets are giving us these things. Um, we just have to learn how to become, well, we don't, as I say, we don't need astrology, but it helps us to become more conscious of what we have inside us to express. So astrology is, a, is basically, if I can use this analogy, is, is a roadmap to, to who we are. Yeah, exactly. You put that in a nutshell there, Rob. Yeah, um, yeah it definitely is. And I was teaching a class to a, a lovely lady once, and she was 92, I think it was. Mm-hmm. And she was so excited about astrology. And she said, this is the first time I've really got into astrology. She said, if only I had looked, seen my birth chart when I was a child or when I was young. You know, and here sure. she was at 92. And I said, you know, it doesn't make any difference because here you are now. You're starting on a, a new journey. And I thought it was fantastic. But it does help, you know, if we can uh, understand our birth charts from an early age. It's very, very helpful. You, in your book, you say the Earth is a living intelligence. Can you tell me more about that, Chrissy? Yeah, I think there's quite a lot of um, scientific evidence of that now. And uh, one is that um, <clears throat> she is, uh, has a, a heartbeat. She has a breath. And um, the heartbeat is, people have probably heard of it as the Schumann resonance. Yes. And um, it's the fact that the Earth, produces very specific vibrational pulsations, if you like, and it was named after this professor, Professor Schumann. I think it was 1953. And if my memory serves me correct, it's 7.83 hertz, right? Yes, that's exactly it, yeah. And as I say, most people know it as a Schumann resonance, but others call it the heartbeat of the Earth, which I think is really lovely. And they found that... um, there is this strong connection between Mm -hmm. us humans and the earth. um, And that if we are deprived of this connection through this uh, frequency, 
then we can become very sick. And in fact, experiments were done, and I don't know if you've heard of them, Rob, where um, one professor from, I think, the Max Planck Institute put all these healthy volunteers into um, a bunker, a way blocked from the magnetic fields of the Earth, including the heartbeat frequency, 7.83. And they stayed there for four weeks. And during the time, they, as I say, they were healthy, but they all suffered from migraines and emotional distress and so on, and had these uh, health, health breakdowns. Wow. But almost as soon as they were given even a brief exposure to this frequency, their health stabilized again. And um, they've had the same, they did the same things with the astronauts as well. Um, and in fact, now, uh, the NASA inclu has included Schumann generators, they're called, in the space station, um, because they used to have this kind of bone density problem right. and health problems and so forth. So we're, we're meant to be uh, on this frequency, the same frequency as the Earth. And you can buy CDs, actually. I have one at work, and um, I gave it to one of the people I work with to listen to because he was going through a lot of stress. And, you know, he, was, he said, this is amazing. After two minutes, his headache had gone. Wow. And he felt much better. So, you know, it's worth getting, actually, as well as my book. <laughs> well, of course. And the name of Chrissy's book, Exonation, is Earth, Astrology's Missing Planet, Reconnecting with Its Sacred Power. Chrissy, do you think that the more we understand the Earth's energies, the more we can help improve conditions on this planet? Yeah, I think there's a, a, an interrelationship, definitely. And I think what's happened, and I, I go into this in depth in the book and what's happened over the, the centuries, mm -hmm. um, really since the um, Industrial Revolution, but really before then, we've become more and more disassociated from the Earth and regard her, unlike the indigenous cultures, which have greater respect for the Earth and certain rituals and so forth, we've become to regard her, and I call her her for a reason, Mother Earth. That's right. Um, as a resource for us, you know, typical humans, everything's like for us, you know. <laughs> and um, take, take, take her oil, her the gems, uh, yeah. everything, and without any thought of giving back. And when I say giving back, you might say, well, what can you give to the Earth? Well, it's a consciousness, I believe. It's a gratitude. It's um, an appreciation of going out into nature and. Uh, Gary and I went out today and for a walk, and uh, it was so beautiful. It was just, it was giving us so much, very healing, and you thinking of, like, thanking the earth and nature and things like this. It's a different consciousness. Instead of regarding her as, well, she's there to, you know, give us food and everything we need, without any sort of thanks. You know, it's very, very odd, really, if you think about it. What is happening to the people in Hawaii right now who are experiencing volcanic eruptions, uh, the, the lava flows, the uh, sulfur dioxide in the air? Uh, how is this affecting their association with Mother Earth and uh, their requirement for the Schumann resonance frequency as well? Yeah, it's an interesting point, isn't it, Rob? I was thinking about that today, actually, because as I mentioned earlier, we're coming into a very significant mm -hmm. time, probably the biggest astrological event of the year on the 15th of May, next week, when the planet Uranus, which moves really slowly, is moving from Aries, where it's been affecting people at a very personal level, into the sign of Taurus. And on the same day, it's going to be there for seven years, on the same day, there's a new moon, which is kind of like a double whammy, it's, uh, and so what I was thinking was that this is a, a precursor, this what's happening in Hawaii, to what we might expect, actually. Oh, really? um, we might expect some sort of sudden Earth changes, because Taurus is the planet related to the Earth, mm -hmm. um, also the banking systems, but that's another subject. But I was thinking that, um, you know, we never know what's going to happen. We can't take this planet for granted, and... As I say, the more we can appreciate her, I think it can change consciousness. And if the a mass of people had this consciousness of more of the indigenous cultures of wanting to give back and wanting to be grateful, um, then I think we can actually change conditions on this planet because there's such a relationship between uh, the Devic Kingdom and uh, humans, and they control the weather, they control um, nature and so forth. And I think there would be a change. I mean, I think the changes are coming anyway, these Earth changes unfortunately for us, 
Um, but I think we can help to moderate them in some ways by our consciousness. But is it really, unfortunately, or is this the way that we progress towards what is in our destiny, in our future? Yeah, exactly. I think so. Um, the earth is going through changes. Yeah. Just as we change and evolve, the earth too, and I've mentioned it in other other um, radio shows, I believe, we believe in the society that uh, on July the 8th, 1964, the earth underwent an initiation, just as humans in their uh, path through the lifetimes go through different initiations, uh, raises of consciousness, if you like, um, the earth too underwent a very, very important initiation. The planets as living beings also go through these initiations. And this uh, is like an evolution of the planet, if you like. And so we can expect more and more of these Earth changes because the, uh, the Earth will um, need perhaps to be, uh, move her oceans into a different position right. and ha have a, a volcano erupt. You, you just don't know. You know uh, far more important in intelligence, if you think about it, than we are because we are virtually nothing without the Earth. Well, we are. We still have the God spark within, of course. Sure. Uh, but we can't continue our evolution in the same way. But the Earth doesn't need us. So as much as we need her. That's right. Uh, you know, this is... We can expect this. All right, Chrissy, stand by. You and I have to take our news break at the bottom of the hour. Explanation of Chrissy Blaze is our special guest. Her new book, Earth, Astrology's Missing Planet, Reconnecting with Its Sacred Power, www.chrissyblaze.com, www.astrologycity.com and www.atherius.org. Chrissy and I return after the news. Don't go away. From our broadcast studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, to the world and beyond, you're watching the Exxon Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. I am Dr. Carl O'Helvey, founder, president of a new cancer foundation focusing on evidence-based physical, mental, and spiritual interventions, including natural cancer cures, prayer, meditation, affirmations, nutrition, and other related holistic cancer prevention and cure modalities. These are used in cancer education, research, and financing care. I ask for your help to continue this important work by donating at www.holisticcancerfoundation.com. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the x Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the x Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere. 24-7-365. Rob McConnell here, presenting an overview for Nicholas Paul Jinnix, author of a fascinating book, Amen. It presents facts revealed by Egyptologists, facts that enable us to understand why Amen is the beginning of creation of God. It provides recommendations for religious leaders of the major religions to unify their beliefs and teach the word of God, love one another. Amen informs people how mankind conceived God, it was the Egyptians that developed the concepts of a soul, a hereafter, and son of God, 
And finally, after the worship of many gods, they conceived the belief in one universal God, the maker of all there is. For more information, visit www.futureofgodamen.com. That's www.futureofgodamen.com. Welcome back, everyone. Chrissy Blaze is our guest, and uh, we're talking uh, to Chrissy about her book, her new book that is just out. It's called Earth, Astrology's Missing Planet, Reconnecting with Its Sacred Power. And uh, Chrissy, as always, great hearing with you, uh, being with you here on the X-Zone. Now, you were talking about Earth's initiation. Could you tell us about that? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the Earth as a living intelligence, mm-hmm. go, just as we do, goes through initiations. Um, well, just as we go through initiations, the Earth, in her evolution, um, will go through initiations. And we believe, uh, as you remember, remember from past shows, and listeners may be aware of, Dr. George King, who I was a, a disciple of for over 20 years, was uh, a medium, a tremendously advanced medium, and was able to receive uh, communications from intelligences beyond this world. And one communication he received was about this initiation which took place on July the 8th 1964 and that was the initiation or what's called the primary initiation of this planet now interestingly um in uh the Alice Bailey books you aware of those I'm sure you are of the um one of them is esoteric astrology right uh, the master dwell cool communicated through Alice Bailey as you as you know and dictated over 20 books in the esoteric astrology books, he did refer to the fact that the, several of these planets in the solar system were known as sacred planets. The Earth was not one of them. But I believe that since this July the 8th, 1964 initiation, the Earth probably now is, has moved up to a higher place in this solar system, if you like. And I would say is now a sacred planet. And this is another reason why I think it's more important, even than before, to take into account the influence of the Earth. And I'm hoping that other astrologers will come in and say, add more to what I've, I'm putting out there about the Earth. What, deter- and, what determines okay. the, 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 the different aspects given to each planet? What determines it? Well, it's astrologers over the it, decades. I mean, sometimes it does take many, many decades right. to uh, determine an influence uh, through... Uh, looking at patterns. Astrology is, is great because it's all about uh, patterns. Uh, for example, what is happening next week when Uranus moves into your sign, Rob of Taurus. Um, it, last, it last happened in 1935, 1936, around about that time. And there we were looking at the end of the World War II and the Great Depression and all this. So we're hoping the same pattern won't be repeated. But what happens in astrology is the same thing is repeated over and over again. So astrologers look back into time even before the planets were discovered, they, they, will see, they will know where the planet was and can see patterns. A plus, um, you know, you do a lot of charts, you get to understand and influence. And also, it can be an intuitive thing, and then it's also a coming together of people and their discussions about it. And, you know, so it takes a long time and a lot of study and a lot of research. When was the last time the the characteristics of planets were changed and their influence on, on humans were changed? Yeah, I don't, they don't really change so much as evolve. I know in the past, in the early astrology, they were very dogmatic, you know, yeah. that uh, Saturn was an evil planet. And, you know, and then now with uh, evolutionary astrology and karmic astrology, which I do, um, it's, Saturn is not an evil planet. It can be very difficult to handle the energies, but it's actually the great teacher. And if we learn how to handle the energies of Saturn, we can really advance. So it's, it hasn't so much as changed, but evolved, I think, over the, over the centuries. So if you, if you could uh, take us through the solar system and just give us one or two uh, characteristics of each planet and how they would affect us. Oh, Rob, you're giving me a big job here. No. All right. <laughs> no, um, I, I'm okay, sorry. Sure. Yeah, I can do that. Okay. Um, we're looking at the sun, we'll start with the sun. Okay. We'll start with the sun because that's the main, the main thing. 
it's the I like to call it the director of the play of your life. Okay, I like you know, that. All the planets yeah. are like players, you're know, actors in the play mm-hmm. of your life, and the sun is the director. It's the big one. So whenever you're going through a time, I always say to people, if you're not sure about something and your life is falling to pieces, try and center yourself in the energy of your sun sign. Try and understand as much as you can about your sun sign. And that will kind of get you back to center. It's your, it's your character. When you develop your sun sign, you're developing your character. It's your creativity. It's your vitality. It's what makes everything sense in your life, actually. Um, <clears throat> the, now, the sun is, the moon is very, very important, too, as we know. But it's more about um, the habits and routines of our life. It's about our feeling nature, too. When we're babies, for example, when we're uh, growing up, we tend to live more in the moon, in the moon energies. We react to things, don't we? But then as we get older, we learn that we can't just react to everything. We have to learn to um, decide how to react. And that is when character is born. Then we start to draw on the sun, the energy of the sun. Okay? Okay. Um, <clears throat> And then you have, uh, do you want to go through them all? We have Mercury, of course, this speedy little planet, mm-hmm. the great communicator, uh, which is always going retrograde about three or four times a year for about three weeks at a time, which causes havoc. Oh, tell me about it. And, yeah. And in fact, there's three retrograde planets right now for a long time, for oh, some boy. months, actually, Rob. So this is not a good time until about, I think it's November to really initiate things because um, this is a good time to uh, sort of in, sort of edit things, to th- rethink things okay. and to take a vacation and stuff like that because retrograde planets, even though the planets don't really go backwards, they do affect us. So Mercury is a speedy little planet and I think we live in a very mercurial age, don't we? I, I, mean, I believe so, yeah. Fast. <laughs> Too fast at times. So I think this planet has gained prominence, I believe, Mm -hmm. in this age in which we live. Because it's it's a fast, speedy little planet, but it doesn't make deep connections, does it? It's very of the time, you know, like, I don't know why, but it's interesting. And then we have um, Venus, which, of course... um, People say it's, it's a love nature, but it's, it's how we make relationships. It's social connections. Um, and Mars is uh, what gets us out of bed in the morning. It's that assertive energy. We need it. Um, every planet has a positive side and a negative side, and a deeper side, too. Okay. And we, as I say, we can consciously use them. Like, if we're going to a social situation, mm-hmm. we can think, oh, I'm going to bring my Venus out now, you know, and uh, if you want to go to the gym and you really don't feel like it, get the Mars going, you know, this is how I work, but other people are probably not as crazy as me, and then we have um, Jupiter, and Jupiter is such a huge planet, isn't it, I mean, it's a massive, giant planet, and it has a massive, giant effect on our lives, and wherever it touches a sensitive point in our charts, we feel... uh, expansive and this has a a very positive side we feel confident but sometimes we can overdo it it's the planet that also on the negative side rules things like gambling because we can you know sort of um have too much faith and this kind of thing luck but it's a fortune i I like to think of uh jupiter as your good karma if you like Mm -hmm. and saturn as your more difficult karma (laughs) But uh, then we have Saturn, which is um, <clears throat> the great teacher, a very, very important planet. And um, that's one that people dread, the Saturn returns, right? Yep. Every uh, 29 years, Saturn goes back to the place it was when you were born, uh, makes one of the great cycles. All the planets have cycles, uh, but the speedier planets, the planets nearer the sun, the cycles are very fast, so we don't feel it so much. But then we come out to the um, outer planets, Ju- starting with well, actually Jupiter, starting with Saturn. We really feel their influence a lot, and over longer periods of time. And Saturn is one of those. And right now it's retrograde um, in Capricorn, which is its home sign, if you like. But it's really going to make us work hard over the next few years. I tell you. <laughs> oh, great! That's all I need is mo- is more work. <laughs> I know it is already, isn't it? Can you feel it? It just went in not too long yep. ago. 
um, you can feel the influence uh, a lot. It should be good for you, though, Rob, as a Taurus. Well, uh, thing, things are getting much busier these days, Chrissy. I must be honest I with know. you. you know, it's it's just one thing after the other. Just when you think you've got one project finished, you get two, three more. I know, yeah. exactly. I think a lot of people are feeling that. That is the Right now we have Mars in Capricorn, and we have Saturn in Capricorn, and we have Pluto in Capricorn. And wow. Capricorn is like that goat that goes up the mountain. It, it, it never stops. You know, it's like very ambitious, very... Uh, active. It's a cardinal sign. It always wants to be on the move, doing things, working. But, yeah. you know, it wears you out sometimes. <laughs> yeah, that's when you want to grab that throat, goat by the throat and uh, give it a couple of Ritalin to slow it down a bit. I know. Yeah. I know. But actually, it should start to slow down. Um, now and coming June, July, August, September, October, it's a good time to kind of streamline things, actually, Rob. And that's what I'm trying to do with my life. Really? Just too many things going on. With all these retrograde planets, it's ideal to try and streamline or delegate or rethink what you're doing. So, oh, um, then we've got Uranus as, as I was moving. It's been in Aries for seven years. And I tell you, it's been, Uranus creates um, shocks, things that you, unexpected things come up. And it's affected people at a very, very deeply personal level. And a lot of people I know have gone through major health crises major financial crisis, major emotional crisis. These are all kinds of things that can happen. Chrissy, anyway, stand by, dear. We, Chrissy, yeah. stand by. We've got to take our final break. Exonation. Chrissy yeah. Blaze is our special guest. And um, here's a couple of websites. ChrissyBlaze.com, AstrologyCity.com, and Etherius.org. And Chrissy and I will be back wrapping up this hour with the rest of the planets here in the X-Zone as we continue from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. And you're listening to us around the world on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, Talkstar Radio Network, Mutual Broadcast Network, and iHeartRadio. You have heard of the X-Zone? Now watch it on Simul TV plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand, worldwide, and more. Does this sound like tomorrow's television? Well, it is, but you can have it today, right now. It is Simul TV. Simul TV offers what the others only wish they could provide. 15 exclusive channels like Exxon, Sci-Fi, and Horror. We are worldwide. No other provider offers that. 500 built-in video games. No need to have an extra expensive system. We have them included. Free video on demand. Live streaming events from around the world. Interactive online network and much more. Tomorrow's TV today. Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at simultv.com. Do it today. The new nonfiction book, Razor of Madness, is similar to cult movies like Clockwork Orange, Dragon's Tattoo, or The Other Side of Hell. Wayne Morin Jr. and Thomas Lee Howe will expose widespread and systematic deficiencies in this thought-provoking tell-all novel. Mind control rages among scholars in law schools. Human rights are ignored while thought reform and mental manipulation are accepted practices used as behavior modification. Dr. Louis Jolion West comes to mind. Media and public scrutiny shows that United States mental hospitals are in fact destructive murder industries. Razor of Madness Expose Novel details this epidemic through an in-depth professional and personal investigation. For decades there has been a revolving door policy that still releases killers and pedophiles back into society. The maestro of mind control continues to haunt America to this very day. Razor of Madness is available in paperback or as a downloadable ebook at Amazon.com. I'm William S. Peckham. If you enjoy a good mystery with a touch of the paranormal, then you'll love my novel, From Out of the Woodwork. It's the story of a young Toronto contractor, Sean Kennedy, who buys derelict homes, guts them, and turns them into multifamily dwellings. Slums just waiting to happen. When Sean buys 29 Livery Lane, the house fights back. Former owners unexpectedly come out of the woodwork as he starts the destruction. The apparitions come to him when he touches old books, 
reads hidden letters, rummages through old boxes, finds a locket or reads a discovered manuscript of a murder mystery. From out of the woodwork, we'll take you from 1899 to the horror of the World Trade Center, September 11, 2001. Check out From Out of the Woodwork on my website, www.williamspeckham.com. All right, three very important websites for you, Exxon Nation. www.chrissyblaze.com www.astrologycity.org and www.atherius.org Chrissy Blaze is my guest and her new book, Earth, Astrology's Missing Planet, Reconnecting with Its Sacred Power. And as always, Chrissy, love having you on the show. Please give my very best to Gary. Thank you so much. Love being on your show. You have a great show, Rob. Oh, Thank thanks you. very much, sweetie. Okay, so I think we've got about three or four planets left, right? Yeah, we have three or four. Yeah, four, I think. Okay. Just very briefly, because I don't want <clears throat> to take up all your time. Shall I finish them? Talking about Uranus, I think. Yes, please. Yep. That uh, spark of... It's associated with enlightenment. It's a sudden shock mm-hmm. that come with Uranus, but it's associated with enlightenment. It's helping us to grow, to change, actually. Uh, it's progressive. It's ingenious actually it's um that spark of intuition that uh spurs us towards investigation or thinking outside the box we have neptune which is um associated with our intuition it's our spiritual enlightenment it's a planet of compassion it can be on the negative side confusion Mm -hmm. uh, deception uh, guilt addiction this type of thing but on the higher side it is a very spiritual influence from that planet and then we have pluto i love the planet pluto it's uh you know the astronomers they said it wasn't a planet yeah some years ago they demoted it i think they've put it back as a planet again now so i've heard but anyway whether it's a planet or not is really powerful influence although it's so small it's extremely powerful in the chart and it's very transformative and unlike Uranus, which brings shocks and sudden changes, it kind of goes very, very deep. And it's painful at times, but it digs deep and brings about these sort of transformations in our lives. And uh, it finds out weaknesses and it finds out strengths. It's very slow moving. It takes about 30 years in each sign. It's incredibly slow moving. It affects a, a generation, an entire generation. And it rules kind of mass movements and political and social changes and this type of thing. And the final planet is um, Chiron. Chiron? You know, basically people call it the wounded healer. Well, what does that mean? It's it's a pattern where people tend to go back and repeat their self-wounding habits just because the wound, if you like, still needs healing. It's um, trying to bring about healing of certain patterns that we have. it's also regarded as a bit of a maverick planet, and it's a lot of independence in this area, um, and so on. But it's, they're basically just a very brief outline sure. of, of the planets, and of course the Earth, which I talked about previously. Chrissy, what was the last planet? Chiron, C-H-I-R-O-N. I've never heard of that planet before. Oh, it's been around quite a long time, but not everybody... Is taking it into account. Um, it was discovered in 1977. Is it in part Pasadena. of Pasadena? But is it part of our solar system now? It is. Yeah, oh. it's got a very eccentric orbit, elliptical orbit huh. between uh, Saturn and Uranus. So it's a long way out. Um, I think it takes about 51 years to go around the sun. Uh, but it was, it was. Um, thought, first of all, it could be a comet, but it was Mm -hmm. too large to be a comet and much too bright to be um, a comet, I think, or a minor planet. But it is regarded as a planet, and astrologers do take it into account now. Here's a question for you. I've, I've had numerologists on the show who say that there are certain things you could do with the numbers in your life to change your destiny. Is there... Yeah. Is there anything that someone can do, for example, if they're 
their real astrological chart just isn't working for them. Is there anything they can do to use a different astrological chart? Well, you can actually manipulate your chart, if you like, to avoid certain pitfalls. Uh, because what people tend to do, I think we all tend to do, we make a mistake. Something comes up and we mm-hmm. make a mistake, right? And then it comes around again. I've noticed this. I don't know if you have, Robert. Things that we do, we mess up in our life. Maybe you've never messed anything up. <laughs> oh, you want to bet? <laughs> <laughs> but they seem to come around again. And I found in my life, my long, long life, that things seem to come around three times. Mm-hmm. And you'd better not mess it up the third time. So, but we can, in astro- using astrology, you can see the problems, the, see the, thing, the, the mistakes you can, coming up potentially, and you can work uh, in advance and change it. And this is called what I call karmic astrology. It's a way of manipulating your karma, improving the situation that you've kind of been born with. So nothing is inevitable, in other words. Um, it's all fluid, according to you. And quantum physics is saying that, isn't it? Nothing is static, nothing's fluid, it's all um, reacting to us, and astrology is the same, uh, and our charts are the same. So in your I opinion... I they're set when we're born, but mm-hmm. we are changing them every second of every day of our lives, to a certain extent. Yeah, um, I, Craig just uh, did a little bit of homework for me, because he was confused with the planetary as well. And it's very confusing for people, because if you go onto the internet, it's, it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Some sites are citing eight planets. Other, pl- other sites are stating, or nine planets. So how is the public supposed to know which is which? Um, how many did I talk about? Sun, moon, Mercury... Venus, Mars. I think it was Jupiter, the last. It was the last planet that that thro- that was throwing everybody off. Chiron. I've got twelve planets, haven't I? Yeah. I've got the Sun, the Moon, Mercury, right. Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune, Uranus, mm-hmm. Pluto, Chiron, and the Earth. Yeah. Twelve. You got twelve planets. Makes sense. Twelve planets, twelve signs, and twelve houses. Right, but I, I, I so, think I think what threw us off over here was the planet Chiron. And Chiron. I, I think I mentioned Chiron. Yeah, yeah Chiron. no, and you did. Um, and, and what we're doing is is what what we found when you go to the the website. You now, for example, um, space uh, space dot com is saying that you know the order of eight or nine planets. Like if yeah, they don't. They're not calling. They don't call Chiron a planet. Astronomers don't. I oh. think they call it a very large. They, they don't oh, call okay. it a planet. They All think right. they call it a very large comet. I see. But astro- astrologers, astrologers now are taking the influence of Chiron into account very seriously, actually. But does Halley's Comet influence the, the astrological chart as well? Um, or, or did hale I've heard that, I, I wouldn't like to say how, but I'm mm-hmm. sure it does at the time. Um, I've heard it said that comets are like uh, lesser lords of karma. Take that for, for it will. I know nothing more about it than that, really. How much of an astrologer's chart is interpretation? It is, yeah. A lot of it's interpretation. Um, it's important to get an astrologer. And I'm not really doing charts now, Rob, because... Right. Um, You're busy with a lot of other things, yeah. Too much else. But you've got to have an astrologer who's more has got a little bit more wisdom and experience than you have, right? Otherwise, how can they give you good advice? Well, let me let me ask you this. Everybody who reads the newspaper, especially on the trains going into work in the morning, they always go to the astrology page to read their horoscopes. How accurate? You know, like these can't be accurate, aren't they? Just how do you, how do you explain that? Because so many people believe what they read in the astro- uh, the astrology section of the newspaper every day. Yeah, because it. Quite often it does work. There was one astrologer in England, I think it was, very famous, I can't think of it. He did these wonderful analyses every day, just using the sun, Mm -hmm. um, mainly. And then other important events, like what's happening next week, when Uranus moves into Taurus, that will affect everybody. So they just use a a few things going on, and you can do something that can can touch most people, actually. Wow. And like what I say about Uranus has gone through Aries for seven years, and it's really affected people mm-hmm. um, to change things. Big changes have been going on in a very personal level. Many people can relate to that, right? 
Chrissy, and if you wrote that down, mm-hmm. people would say, yes, that's happened to me. So it's very yeah. general, but it, it is true. It, it is affecting everybody. Where do you see astrology? Will astrology in the future keep evolving, or does astrology stay the constant as the world around us changes? No, I, I have to keep evolving as we do, mm-hmm. um, because really, I mean, if you think about it, the planets, we don't understand the cosmos or the planets right. um, at all, really, very little. And we don't really understand their influence. I think as we evolve, because the planets are more advanced than we are, if you like, I think we then draw into ourselves a higher aspect of the influence of the energies which they're giving to us. And so when we are able to do that, then I suppose we will understand another layer of uh, influence than we do now. Does that make sense? It does. Chrissy, where can people get copies of your new book, Earth's Astrology, Missing Planet, uh, reconnecting Um, with its sacred power? They can get it the usual places, the Amazon, the Barnes & Noble, but local bookstores as well. If if they don't have it, they can order it in, and I'm very grateful if people do request it from local bookstores as well. All right, Chris. The Ethereum Society carries it too. Chris, I want to thank you so much for joining us. Always a great pleasure talking to you. Once again, my very best to Gary and Dexo Nation. If you'd like to uh, find out more about Chrissy, visit chrissyblaze.com, astrologycity.com, and atherius.org. I'll be back on the other side of this commercial break with the news at six and a half minutes past the top of the hour as we continue here in the Exxon with yours truly, Rob McConnell from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Check us out at line, online, I should say, not at line, online at www.xzbn.net. Modern Esoteric, Beyond Our Senses by Brad Olson, consummates the lifeology story about where humanity originates. It is the lost continents, the primitive wisdom, the mythos of creation, and the rethinking of ancient history as we are taught in academia. There is much more to the story than what we have been told. As this is the first book in the Esoteric series, Modern Esoteric starts at the beginning of time and accelerates up to this modern age. Future Esoteric is book two in the series and takes a forward-looking position ahead of today with an open and honest examination of the ET issue and various unexplained phenomena. To discover the writings of author Brad Olson, visit www.bradolson.com. That's www.bradolson.com. Are you or is someone you know struggling with addictions, depression, anxiety, relationships, low self-esteem, lack of confidence, grief, success, and prosperity? Do you know that your subconscious belief plays a big role in the outcome of your hard work? We can help you permanently change the beliefs that may be the reason for your struggles and failures. We care about getting you the return on your investment and the results you are looking for. We can help you be free of the limitations of your past and in realizing your highest potential. We work with people by phone and Skype. For more information, visit us at www.ritasoman.com. That's www.ritasoman.com. Do you think you have energy problems in your home? Do you feel better when you're away than when you're home? Joey Korn is a global leader in the world of dowsing who specializes in personal energy clearing and space clearing. He can help you create an ideal energy environment in your home no matter where you live in the world. Learn about his remote spiritual house cleaning services and much more at www.dowsers.com. 
You can get Joey's book, Dowsing, A Path to Enlightenment, as well as other dowsing books and tools, Kabbalah books, and Walter Russell books. Joey's work is really amazing. Go to dowsers.com right now. That's D-O-W-S-E-R-S dot com or call 1-877-DOWSING. That's 1-877-369-7464.